Hello. So here we have a velocity selector. All right. Um, we know the voltage across these plates. We know the distance separating the two plates, and we know the strength of this magnetic field. Now, this magnetic field, it's from something else that's not in the picture. It's not being caused by the plates or anything like that. Okay, so, but there it is. Um, and my question is, what velocities will this thing select? All right, so just to review, or if you've seen this before or not, um, a, what a velocity selector does is it takes, I'm going to draw another picture because I don't want that one to get messy. So, say you've got some charged particles coming in, a bunch of different ones, so Q, another Q, another velocity, coming in at different velocities, and some of them, because of the forces involved, will be deflected in some manner. They might hit the plate, they might do that, and only an exact right speed will be allowed to pass right through. All right, so we are to find what is that velocity for this particular velocity selector. No, given that we know these things listed, I don't feel like making up numbers. Okay, so one velocity is gonna get through and we wanna find what that velocity is. Okay, um, let's get to it. Uh, the way that you wanna solve this is, well, think about the forces. If, if some charge is gonna manage to pass through undeflected, then that must mean that the forces on it are balanced out. Let's do a free body diagram of this little charge I just made up. So here he is. Um, there are going to be some forces on him, right? He's a charge. Let's imagine it's a positive charge for the time being with velocity in this direction and the magnetic field is into the page, right? Or the computer screen, rather. Uh, if you use your right-hand rule, We've got the velocity is pointing to the right, the magnetic field is pointing into the page, so the magnetic force on this positive particle will be upward. Okay, so right-hand rule stuff, right? Now, it's also going to be subject to an electric force, right? Not from the magnetic field, but the fact that it's inside of this charged plate thing. The plates are going to create a... Um, electric field, right? Electric fields point from positive to negative. So let me draw in some of these lines. See the pictures are getting crazier all, all the time. So it's it's a uniform electric field, all right, because it's from parallel plates. And so a positive charge that's sitting in a downward facing electric field is going to have a downward electric force on it. All right. And we'll be neglecting gravity. You usually do for a velocity selector. Okay, so if this thing's not going to be deflected, we must have that the sum of the forces in the y direction here are zero. Otherwise, it would be deflected in some direction or other, right? All right, so that means zero is equal to magnetic force minus electric force, just doing the whole Newton's second law thing here. Or in other words, magnetic force has to equal electric force. You might have been able to get to that step right away, but there's the steps. Okay, so for this thing to go through in a straight line, we must have it that the magnetic force is equal to the electric force. Cool. Um, but, you know, we're looking for a velocity here, so let's, let's keep going. The electric force and the magnetic force, well, what definitions do we have for those? For the magnetic force, well, this is a particle moving with velocity through a magnetic field. So I think we're going to want this one. Magnetic force is charge times velocity times magnetic field times the sine of the angle between the velocity and the field. Okay, between V and B. Electric force. Well, we have a lot of different, uh, or several different electric force equations. Um, but, well, one of some of them have, like, multiple charges. We only have our one charge here, and we did mention an electric field. So let's write this definition, that the, uh, the electric force is equal to the charge times the electric field. Okay. Well, I see we have charge on both sides. That's the charge of this particle, so we can cancel that out. Um, and we're looking for velocity. Problem, a couple problems I see. Theta, I, we haven't discussed that. 
and E. We weren't actually given the electric field. Okay, so let's see. Theta, that's the angle between the velocity and the magnetic field. So looking back at, I don't know, any number of these pictures, the velocity is supposed to be pointing this way, right? Straight that way, not being deflected. And the magnetic field is straight into the page. So yeah, that angle is 90 degrees. And the sine of 90 is 1. You can confirm if you like. So because theta equals 90, that's just going to turn into a 1 and simplify our equation. Now the electric field, we, I did not give the electric field. What we did give though was this potential difference voltage here instead. So let's see, well how can we relate those? For a uniform electric field, we know that potential difference is equal to the field times the, the, um, the, the, the distance through that potential difference. So that is the plate separation distance in this case. The battery is attached to one end on the negative plate, one end on the positive plate. So the distance associated with this electric potential is D here. Okay, um, and that's for a uniform field, and we know it is uniform because I said so. Okay, so instead of E, we can write V over D. So taking my, re rewriting my equation here, we've got the velocity times the magnetic field is equal to the potential difference divided by the plate separation distance. Now watch out with your V's here. I'm, see, I've been blatantly capitalizing. This is the uh, so-called potential difference or voltage. It's got a million names. And this is just our velocity. So we divide over B and we get that the velocity is equal to the potential difference divided by the magnetic field and the plate separation. Okay, so something interesting to note here is that the charge canceled out, right? At the beginning, I said, let's pretend this is a positive particle. Um, I don't know if you thought that that was weird or not. I mean, I did sort of just say that. But let's imagine if it was a negative particle instead for a second. Well, if, in, if we instead did this free body diagram, scooch this over, for a negative particle, still, you know, we still have the velocity in the same direction. Uh, the negative particle, well, that by the, uh, the electric field would cause the negative particle to go up. But your right hand rule is, well, the right hand rule with the magnetic field, that's for positive particles. So, I don't know, you can use your left hand for negative particles, or you can just use your right hand and then reverse your answer. Either way, the point is the magnetic field would cause the negative uh, particle to have a downward force. And, you know, it doesn't really matter. At the end, we still get to that, that the, these two forces have to equal each other, and then the charge cancels out the equation, and it's all good. So this is the velocity selected for, down here, the velocity selected for by this velocity selector.